So welcome back to our recording of Speaking Bodies of our chat. We had a small technical issue, but now we are back. We've been able to watch the film and listen to the inputs of our artist, Bianca Battling-Grammar, and our guest, speaker, and um, participant and academic, Olalompe Ike, who are both in relationship with the work and the subject we're discussing, which is speaking bodies. So Bianca, before the break, you were busy telling us about the journey of engaging with your muses, how they agreed to come on board for the work. And Olalompe, you had shared what it was like to consider being naked and being part of that journey, being painted. Where do we pick up from there? Um, yeah, so I was saying that um, there, there are many different stakeholders. It's interesting. Um, it would be nice to, to actually speak to the images, you know, find out what, how they came to that final decision of what I would refer to as the unveiling, which is to, to you know, take it all off and have yourself free and painted and part of the experience. Because, you know, especially as African women culturally, you know, you have stakeholders, you know, you're thinking about mom and dad, husband, and, you know, all these people that potentially think you know, what, or you're planning to do what, you know, nudity is, um, it, it's almost sacred, you know, and, and there is ownership, there's a sort of ownership over nudity, a woman's nudity. So I think being part of the experience, um, the speaking bodies experience for all these muses would have been a really fantastic opportunity to take full ownership over their bodies, you know, to, to, to really be fully involved in the process means that you are saying, this is me and I, I want to share my natural form and I'm very happy to be sharing my natural form. And I think that would have been amazing for me to, to have been involved with. So have you decided, are you next? <laughs> Well, we well I'm, I'm sort of saved by, by the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm, I'm volunteering. I'll be next. I'll work yes, up. Fabulous. So I, I think the group, the whole group scenario works perfectly, you know, rather than just even an individual um, format, the group, the shared experience perspective really brings it all together you know, that whole natural experience in it together. So Bianca, if you can get us both at the same time, <laughs> that would be fabulous. <laughs> I mean, that, that would be great, actually. What were you saying, yeah. Bianca? Yes. What happens in the, um, in the session uh, is what, or at the first, at first um, the muses poses alone. Okay. And we are doing only this movement, no? Um, by herself. And then you can see now she in the painting, she's laughing and, and I saw her dancer too, because uh, when they work through her shame, well, her shame, yeah. they start to let all you know, the vulnerability and, and, and feeling uncomfortable, when they start to feel comfortable, appears, appears the the me um, spirit all the um, yeah, the feelings the real feelings what we have inside no we are laughing we are talking we are we are only joining ourselves with our clothes but joining ourselves like this no now we are joining about our conversation and we uh, in the workshop. I'm trying to be always talking with them and only only uh, let them to relax their bodies. No? And we, then when we start to paint the pictures in group, it's different, no? Because then one has to first you do the worst part, no? The the music has been the worst part at the at the first time in the shooting because it's like, well, I am alone. But we, when we are together and we all are naked and we have been doing this work with ourselves, it's, it's amazing what is happening in a group, no? At the first it's like, well, I don't know if, if, 
if I told you or not, or, or what we do. But then it's like, yeah, 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 yes, really, I will, I will, and we are here, and what happens? Mm -hmm. For me, it's really interesting to see how a woman starts in one way and, and finish in another sensation about her body. And then with the uh, questions I made in before the, the shooting and after, I can see the change of mind to understand. It's not so difficult, no? It, it's really, and some woman, some woman said to me, oh, when we finish, no, and we close, the, I put the clothes on another time, it's like, well, no, me molesta, no? It, 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 oh, it's annoying the, the clothes now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fascinating. I mean, what's what's special about it is the fact that nakedness has shame, as you've been saying throughout your exploration with the solo project. There is no trace of shame for me. Um, looking at it with a curatorial eye, I don't see any traces of shame, self-loathing, and any dynamic of um, falter or distance with the artist in the work. I see there's so much trust, like the confidence in the in Sylvia behind you in the chair. She's mm -hmm. like a queen. She owns the space of her body. <laughs> and I think the irony is that as African women, culturally, we had the most freedom in the clothes we wore to just have that free expression in our bodies. But the, the notion of colonialism and forces like Christianity, for example, and then the bearing down of masculinity started meaning that we have to go inward with shame and cover our bodies. Yeah. I see you nodding, Olalampe. What's your view on that? Absolutely. I think um, I, I, I totally agree with what, what you just said. Um, um, historically, it's amazing if you look historically we we had a lot less on you know we had a lot less on and I think I, I remember a couple of days ago just thinking about today and thinking about this theme of the speaking bodies and I was thinking that um, his, um, um, years ago um, it's interesting to have it would have been interesting to have experienced what kind of conversations women had with each other when we had less on you know, the, the theme is speaking bodies, you know, and our bodies actually talk, you know, our movements are different depending on our moods. And it's interesting when there is, when that barrier is off, you most likely would communicate within the sisterhood in a much different way. You would notice when someone is fatigued quicker, there's just that exposure, you see it better. You notice the movements and there is also, I'm sure back then, less shame connected to the body form because there would have been general, generational representation. So younger girls, the younger women in the, in the clan or in the clan would see their bombs in grandma and moms. They would never look at their bombs or their breasts as there's something wrong with me because they can see the representation visually over the years. It's like seeing skin or eyes or nose, but in a more total form. And it's normalized, basically. It's normalized, yes. But I, I think now there is more shame connected to, and there's less body acceptance because it's all covered up. So we're less honest in our representation and in our, in our conversations. We only see this up. And this can be masked very, very easily. So as women, we have different conversations as well. I, I, I would say compared to back then when we were more open in all forms of openness. Yeah, that, that is very powerful. What, what is your feeling about that, Bianca? To, to summarize, how do you want your work to engage that dynamic more in the future and, and even now? Well, um, I want to explore more in the group, in the big group, and showing all the breasts and all the bones, uh, yeah. mainly. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, because we need to see ourselves with this naturality, you know, and it's, it's, for me it's essential, it's essential. It's more, 
and what I say before, no, here in Spain we we are starting a big movement about afrodescendants and and we are um, talking every day and shouting we need our our representations and we need to see being seen being seen no? mm -hmm. yeah, because um, in Spain what happens is like um, afrodescendants are we are an Spain people no mm -hmm. as look to, uh, to the eyes of the Spain people white people Spain, yeah. but, but all this representation is necessary because in the museums we have an women artist yeah. uh, and left here you can imagine uh, African artists in the museum and less woman African artists and less you can see paintings of black people and we are needing all this information and visual information in the media in television in cinema in publicity and no, no, something like modernity. No sé si lo digo bien, but no, we always have the black uh, people oh. in uh, media, no, um, publicity to show more we are modern, no, but it's not real. We need to be in all the places, and for me, it's really important to us to can use a little bit, all no, a step by step, but going through and and see ourselves like a black naked woman, see black powerful woman, not sexualizing, not mm -hmm. like a star and all these uh, yes. um, visibility, what all the media is showing about the black woman, always strange, always aggressive, always sexual. It's not this. It's not, it's, we're not talking about this. We are talking about we are women, we are natural women, and we are um, strong women or not so strong and we are happy or not and we can be sadness and we can be deeply mysterious and we can be laughing all the day we can dancing and we can only be being it's what it's important for me in in this way of the you know it's like it's a it's, it's a um, I don't know the words now. <laughs> no, it's it's very it's so powerful what you're saying because in contexts like um, when we are immigrant women in places like Europe or in Spain, for example, we are forced to be even more invisible by the culture, and we become people without a presence in the formalized culture like museums or art galleries. In fact, our bodies are sexualized um, by a patriarchy that commodifies us we are not seen as something beautiful and special even when we are naked we are seen as a commodity so in societies like that we are actually often people who are doing the most basic functions in that society so we are compressed to emotions and feelings of function you know and service but when in our own time when we hold up a mirror I think what you're painting is for every woman, even women in that neo-colonial context, they can see the emotions and the freedom in the women you paint. And the women run across context. They are all black women. And suddenly you are showing a power and a strength and a priority in black women and their bodies that is invisible in the formal cultural narrative in Spain, for example. How is that received by, by other artists, the creative community and, and museums and culture in your context in Spain? In Spain is um, what is happening, we are creating um, some, um, how say? we are creating some spaces for black people and in this context, it's all growing. But in the top places, they are not realizing how important it is. Yes. No, it's like, well, uh, Black Lives Matter, 
because actually people in the United States, yes, but here we have a lot of, of issues too, what you are not thinking. In Spain, people think they are not, they are unlucky in Spain, and it's not true. It's oh, not it's not it's not it's not and we are, and now with the community, we are growing, growing, and, and we are talking about, and now young people is changing mentality, and then, is, and what happens too, for me, my vision, uh, I think when in Spain we talk about african it's something stereotyped, you know? Yeah. It's like African art made in Africa. Sometimes I make my portfolio, I send my portfolio to some gallery, African gallery, and it's not the per the, the profile why they use because mm -hmm. I, am, I am a mixed African painter, no? My, my base of Painting is European history of art, yeah, not, is not African. Um, and, yes, and exactly. My work is not a in the in the in, in the way that don't seem for the color or maybe yes, but uh, the representation is not it's not it's uh, don't drink about African roots. Yes. Okay, that's that's very powerful. Yes, and in, in African galleries from here, it's like we, we want African artists from Africa. Okay, so your, your position being able to relate to both contexts is quite important because you can actually see that you can break through the narratives that are being used to define uh, women of color and then um, Eurocentric or Caucasian women, it's actually bringing together those narratives as women having more power and visibility in the art world, but at the same time your work is championing Black female bodies. Yes, because the vision here in Spain is like the Black woman or Black people in general is like they are poor, they are yeah. poor immigrants, they can't do anything, they have an excuses, excuses. No? And for me, it's really important to show the, the, the strength and the naturality of the woman. Really, no, the, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. no, 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 it's like we are here, we are here. And we can be painters, dancers, we can be teachers, we can be uh, liar, liars, we can do, we do all this work, but people don't understand that easily. Absolutely. I think, I think that's a really great note for us to round up our discussion. Um, one of the things I really appreciate about your work is that you, you haven't confined your education or your context in the art world to influences that are only African. Um, from my perspective, I see that you've used the techniques of painting through time very classical techniques, very respected palettes. Your school is very respected. And so it creates this beautiful fusion between a long tradition of painting and technique with a very new narrative using that technique. And it's something incredible because you told us that your mom and your grandmom, they both wanted to make those inroads using education using access, et cetera. How, how did you respond to you having had that classical and exceptional training as a painter in your work? Well, always I have been drawing. And, and when I started my, my art studies, I had a great teacher who was showing me how to access to the painting with emotionally and with technique. And he always looked at my work and said me, yes, Bianca, but and he was uh, reading my, my feelings through my work and it was amazing. Sometimes I hear him in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> because it's like I am thinking, now Bianca, go with the flow, no? And sometimes <laughs> of, of good um she always said me, Bianca, when you knew how you knew how to arrive to a result, start again. It's not creative. Yeah. 
And I was looking at the big master every day and I was saying, wow, 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 no? So the color in Presidents and Presidents and, and for me was my, no, for the color. Because always I have been obsessed by the color. But one day when I paint my portrait, I saw how can I use the color with black, um, uh, black body, black skin. Yes. And start, then I start my journey, really. But all my, my formation was uh, uh, doing a lot of, of uh, drawing, always, until I, it's like, I am really disciplinated, I have to say. I am like, <laughs> still, I don't know how to do something. I know I don't like to stop. But I like to be free to be emotionally emotion, emotion in my painting. Connected. I like to feel, I want to feel when I am painting. It's the only, it's important to me to feel. When I'm not feeling, I left the, the painting. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, no? And now I am remembering my teacher so much because now I am understanding how to feel every painting. That's now, wonderful. 20 years ago. Wow. <laughs> so they mean That's what I am spending now. <laughs> That's wonderful. Wow. Okay, so we we look forward to seeing the developing work, the next body of work from you. And we we know now that your work is available. Bianca has her exhibition on Artsy in Matlozi Art Gallery. She also works independently with other galleries around the world and um, distributors. And she has quite a profile of work on her website and on her Instagram, which you can um, just share with us when we summarize. Ola Lompe, I'd like you to summarize for me what you feel the critical thoughts are that you want us to take away before we finish. And then uh, Bianca, you can conclude for us. Absolutely. So I would say, I wouldn't take too long. Um, I would say that um, daily, uh, I start with authentic authenticity. So I think um, Bianca is um, what I would refer to as a benchmark for being able to study and understand how authenticity aligns with the work that is delivered um, by a contemporary artist, uh, especially as it connects to a narrative, to a um, narrative that is around Black the representation of blackness or, or black or femininity or you know black women or black body. Um, I think there is a lot of um, bandwagonism. So there is a tendency that if an artist is skilled, anyone can you know pick up a canvas and paint a black woman. But I think um, from, from the academic perspective, we, we will see Bianca as artist as brand that has Two, two domains, two dimensions, the functional dimension, which the curator from the artistic perspective appreciates. So the skill, and like you mentioned, how she's able to really demonstrate how her skill has evolved with the medium that she uses and you know, the classical perspectives that she incorporates, but also that emotional domain. Emotional domain is one that is difficult to um, bandwagon, you know, the, the, the spirit that, that is infused into the work. It's almost like the, 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 the artwork becomes possessed by the spirit that is transferred from the, the, the artist. That cannot be bandwagoned. And I think Bianca is exemplary of that. So I think any young um, fem female artists, contemporary artists or male even, that really wants to understand how you can represent that functional and emotional aspects of what you what you deliver as a product, which you know, for for the context of marketing is a brand. You know, you really need to be able to tap to those two dimensions. You know, your skill, but also that emotional authenticity that the audience will most likely sort of resonate with. You know, and I think that's what that's the strongest aspect that Bianca brings to the table. As, as an artist. Yeah. Absolutely. Very, very well summarized. I think the infusion of the spirit of the person is something um, she really does capture in her work. And yes, I, think, I think we may have lost Bianca's connection. Hopefully she will reconnect. 
Okay, I'm just going to summarize um, while we have you and I still here that okay. um, our talk has dealt with how black women's bodies are represented in contemporary art. And we've done that through the lens of the work of one artist, Bianca Battle Nguema. Her work is available and she has shared with us her philosophy and how she goes about making her work. And the important thing you've just summarized, Olalompe, is how she has a fingerprint that has to do with infusing her work with the spirit and the real human texture of her muses. And in the film, we were also able to see how she connects with her muses, what her values are around her work and how she brings to life that narrative. And she's back. Yes. <laughs> so you're, you're back just in time, Bianca. Um, can you unmute your mic? My connection died. <laughs> oh, no, I understand. I, I will have the same thing soon. But I was busy sharing for everyone how you, you were able to share your process with us and how Olalompe framed it from yeah, the perspective of your, your individual footprint in the art world um, as a painter, but also as a human being being able to capture that special quality and texture in every person in their portrait, which is really something significant and special about your work. And also because you depart from the color palette um, that people are expecting of black bodies and black skins. Just looking at the three of us, we are a range of, of color as black women, um, tonally like skin tones, but our emotions to you will represent different colors, which you explain to us is something you capture in your paintings and something specific, something distinct and very unique in your work. So that color palette has come to mean that all your work focuses on the face, the body, the internal spirit, but also the features, which is something that is quite powerful for me just by engaging with the work you can see that this is a person of color you know you can see that the, the the narrative is all over the physical body but around it and so you haven't needed to try and replicate skin color oh because for me it's really important to touch the the color inside of the body <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It is important to, to touch, to feel how the color of the soul came to me. So this I like to do some a lot of sketches, a lot of test colors to understand what is the vibration of the soul of the muse what I am working on. It's really important for me. I don't like to see well mm, this color for this no. I, I like to feel. To feel what the inside color, you can show it the real emotion that I feel from the world. Absolutely. Okay, so I would like to thank both of you. I've thanked you, Olalompe, for being with us for your time. It's mm -hmm. been insightful, and we have this agreement we are going to be painted in studio one day. It's, it's, been, it's been a really fantastic experience to have this conversation over three continents, essentially, three different yeah. countries. And as a gallery, Matlozi Art, for us, we would like to have more conversations about our bodies and our representation. And it has been a really wonderful afternoon sharing that with you both. Thank you for taking us into your studio, Bianca, and for sharing your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I totally enjoyed it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, everyone. See you next time. And have a good evening. Bye. You too. Bye. Thank you.